I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the 9th, February 2015, Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting, Roman 1 Public Hearing, RSA 41, colon 9, small alpha 1, increase fees for the fire department. That public hearing is open at 7 o'clock. Chief, please take the center. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Come before you tonight with a schedule of permits and fees that are proposed to take over the uh, current room, uh, the current schedule that exists in Fire Prevention's office right now. The proposed schedule that you, I do believe, you all have copies of, has um, new fees associated with older items. Obviously, these items were in the past twenty-five dollars. Some were seventy-five dollars. They weren't in. Um, conjunction with what's going on with today's building and we have made an alignment with our building department as well as several other communities we pulled several larger communities and large size communities to see how they did it the proposed fee schedule that you see in front of you takes into account best practices right now in the field and it's also akin to what they're providing for services Do you have any questions on this chat is there anything that I can bring up excellent job Thank you, excellent we need to enhance our revenues instead of working for peanuts I'm fine with it. Thank you. Thank you. Long overdue. Now, does this put us pretty much with what other towns are doing? I mean, are we it does. We used Hooksit, um, Bedford, Portsmouth, Salem as comparison towns. And um, we did make some minor adjustments. If you compare us to the building department right now, generally speaking, they go on construction fees and a uh, cost of construction fees. So their, their charges will be a nickel or four cents on the thousand. Instead of that, because we're not generally seeing that when we are submitted plans, mm -hmm. what we're seeing is protected area. Good. So we're charging a nickel per protected area for, and various things like that in the description here. It's very similar to what Hooksit's doing, what Portsmouth's doing. So it's it's very much across the board what we're seeing in the increases. Okay. And for like site evaluation, if somebody's putting on a charity event like a tent or something and they have to have a site evaluation? A site inspection, absolutely. Okay. Yep. We'll, also with we'll life safety. Um, for a permit of assembly, we have to go there to make sure that all of the lights are working, make sure that all the exits are actually appropriate, yeah. that the site plan is up to date um, for the exits and things like that, and make sure that there are no occupancy problems. Right, so. but it, it won't put any undue burden on them, will it? I mean, that they didn't have before? No, not at all. This is uh, this is a reclassification of the fee schedule, but it's not. we're not adding to the necessary requirements for building owners. Okay. Actually, permits of assembly is no charge. Correct. By statute. Yeah. All right. Good. In instead, <laughs> you know, what we're doing is we're inspecting those facilities to make sure that they're up to, up to code. Um, and they have, they have a known set of criteria that they must meet in order to, uh, to receive okay. the permit. Thanks, sir. Thank, you. Thank okay. you. And have you had any feedback from the public on that? Done we this? haven't. This has actually gone to town managers and to you so okay. far for review. Yeah, we did notice. We did publish it. Yes. We published the... Oh, the thanks, the, the legal notice contained a copy of the information yeah. that was in the uh, okay. In the and chart. Have you had any feedback, Fred, from anybody? Nothing. Or? Nothing, huh? Okay. We're going modern. I love it. Before I, I uh, yield or go to Mr. Welch, uh, I do not see anybody in the uh, audience that wishes to speak. Uh, so, Mr. Welch, any comments? No, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this was le legally advertised in accordance with the statute for the, this evening's meeting. Um, this is in proper order and ready for the board to adopt it if they feel this is uh, the, the, the fee schedule they should adopt. Thank you. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Griffin Bridal, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. This public hearing is closed at 1904 minutes. Thank you. Roman 2, public comment period. Mr. Waddell. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say that. Um, these storms have been horrendous, <laughs> and please be patient with Public Works. They are they are doing everything they can to keep our streets clear, to push the snow banks back. They're working, working, working. So please be patient. Please stay off the roads if you can. Give them the opportunity to get it cleared up. Visit the town website. The uh, updates from Public Works are right on the front page. 
Go to channel 22, you've got a crawl or on the bottom, information on the bottom updating you. Uh, and make sure that you try not to put your carts out unless it's your actual collection day. If people need any kind of help or shelter, non-emergency line for the police department, 929-4444. There. I think the Public Works Department deserves a lot of mm. credit. They've done a wonderful job during these stormy times. Thank you. Yeah, I, I uh, go along with what Rick and the others said. The uh, Public Works has done an excellent job. I was down there today. The, the guys are very tired. It's been a long two weeks, but they are giving it their all, and uh, we do owe them uh, a, a big thanks. The one thing I wanted to bring up was I know we've had a lot of snow. The hydrants yes. that are in your neighborhood, yeah. that hydrant protects your house. Uh, I've been out and about, seen some of them. I've seen some that were covered over with plow trucks plowing snow up on them, with snow blowers, people snow blowing snow onto the hydrants. You can't do that. That hy the, the guys are out there and they're trying to find the hydrants and they're doing the best they can to get out there and get them shoveled. But you want to know something? If you're covering it over, that's just making it harder for them. And the, and so I ask, I beg, I plead, if you have a hydrant out or near your house, please go out and clear the snow away from it. The house you save may be your own. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And Mr. Welch, any public comments or announcements from the calendar? I'll have some information when I get to my report, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, sir. I have one more thing, sir. Sorry about that. Sorry. I also want to... Uh, I also want to thank Desi at the 401. Desi, for the past three or four snowstorms that we've had, uh, although he has not been open 24 hours a day, he has stayed there. He was there last night, all night long. Any of the public works guys that come in and want a sandwich or something to drink or a hot cup of coffee Good. or a place to go to the bathroom, just some place to wake up, he has let them go in the police, fire, and public works. But I know the public works guys really appreciate it all Desi has done for them. Good. At no charge to the people. That's so, wonderful. Or, or them. Thank you, sir. Roman IV Consent Agenda. There are 25 veterans requalifications. The parade and public gathering license for the half at the Hampton Half Marathon on 2-22-15 will be discussed under appointments by Mike St. Laurent. We're going to strike that. Not right now, Michael. Stand by, please. Um, in addition to the 25 veterans requalifications, we have the Eastern States 20 mile on 3-29-15. We have Cycle the Sea Coast on 5-3-15. motion, please. So moved. Motion. Bell. Second. Four. Okay. Uh, clarification, we are voting on the veterans requalification only because I'm not going to vote on that. Okay, we are, gonna, we are going to uh, vote on the three items to include the veterans requalification, the Eastern States, and the Cycle of Sea Coast, and you don't have to vote in favor. Well, I don't want to vote against the veterans requal uh, requalification. Okay. So what do we do? Well, well just, just for simplicity and harmony's sake, all those in favor of the uh, veterans qualification. Uh, yes, yeah. I will so move. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Waddell seconded me. Then regarding uh, the Eastern States 20 mile, 329.15, and Cycle of Sea Coast, 5315. Griffin. Bridal. Bridal, thank you, sir. All those in favor? Um, I have a question. What if we're still stuck with all this snow and all this mess? And besides, it says 222.15 on here. What's that? 222.15, as I just said, is the half marathon. Yeah, that has been removed, and Michael is here. Uh, to represent that effort, and we're going to discuss that under appointments. So the Eastern States 20 mile, the 329, and Cycle of Seacoast 53 are incorporated in this motion that you just have. I just want to make sure I understand what we're yes, doing. Okay, I'm opposed. Okay, that is four, one opposed, Wolsey opposed. Thank yep. you. Roman 5 appointments, one, Christy Pulliam, Finance Director, Alpha Year End Finances. Good evening. Good evening. You guys should have received uh, the report, I think, at the end of last week. All the days are kind of running together at this point, but yeah. I think they were out at the end of last week. Um, this is the second pass at the financials for the end of 2014. So the target was 100%. Uh, motor vehicle income total for the year came in at 3.012 million which is 271000 above budget. 
The other major contributors to the year's income total of $7.59 million were interest on taxes at $373,000, building permits at $261,000, State of New Hampshire at $1.39 million, departmental income at $548,000, parking lots at $453,000, Land rent at 168,000, franchise fees at 236,000, insurance reimbursements from Health Trust at 235,000, and the Real Estate Trust um, income at 693,000. The expense summary shows the year-to-date expenses by department. At the end of December, operating departments with open fields but without debt service were 98.4% of the budget, which is 1.6% below the month's target of 100%. Uh, this is shown on the year in savings report as 357000 as opposed to the original estimate early in at the end of December of 594000 The majority of the departments finished the year below the target level. Uh, during the next except three weeks there, but it's actually we're down to one week. Uh, the financial results will continue to be reviewed and adjusted. Uh, this is being done in preparation of the audit field work, which is scheduled to begin next Monday. I was going to say in two weeks, but then on my way down here, I realized it's actually a week away. So uh, next Monday, the auditors will be coming in to begin the audit for um, 2014. Uh, do we want to do questions on that first, or do I have one more item in regards to end of year um, encumbrances and uh, warrant articles that need to be voted on to be carried forward? I had given uh, you guys a summary sheet. We talked about this the last time I was here, early January, but this is the up to date one. Um, it's asking to carry over. $172,195.29 in open purchase orders. This is only from the general fund. Um, and then there's a list of one, two, three, four, five warrant articles to be carried forward into uh, 2015. They're non-lapsing. I will read through the list of warrant articles for you. Uh, it's a warrant article from 2013, number 10, which was for the wastewater treatment facility study for 90000 Warrant article, uh, the rest of them are from 2014. Warrant article 15 for the grist mill dam of 400,000. Warrant article 16 for the high street culvert of 235,000. Warrant article 22 for recreation infrastructure lights and signs. There's 530 left there, but there's also an open purchase order uh, for 5,460 for that, for some more tree work that they need done over there. And warrant article number 23 for the grist mill restoration, which is $28,678,000. So it's a total um, general fund related encumbrances and warrant articles of $926,403.29. Thank you, ma'am. So. Mr. Waddell, questions? Yes. Um, Christy, so you said we're 98% the budget. 98.4, yeah. How, how does that compare to prior years? I mean, is that about? I think last year when I was looking back, I think they ended at like about 201. Um, so we're about a little, almost 150 over that this year. Okay. But that's still, we consider that close or tight. Um, I know last year Mike was sweating because they were getting pretty close. When you're t looking at 27 million, 26 million dollars, people look at 357,000 and think it's a lot of money, but it's not. Right. I consider it to be close. And were there any departments as you went through this that sort of stick out or, you know, problems or? Uh, no. Um, there were some, there were no, uh, uh, none of the major line items or complete departments overall were over. There are, you know, different sections of subtotals that were over, but they were all ones that were kind of running over all along. Um, back at either the end of December or beginning of January when I was here, we had gone through a whole list of all the possible line items that could run over. Um, so they all kind of fell into those same categories. So there was nothing new on there. And you said you one more pass? Hopefully, one more pass. All right. And, yeah. and you're pretty confident that you're pretty good yeah, there? Yeah, I, I think this is a really good pass. Okay. Um, the first one that I had sent out to you w was not. I found a couple more things uh, last week. There was some um, SRF payments that needed to be made for 14. They have since been received and paid. 
Um, so I think this is a pretty good guess, a pretty good estimate at this point until the auditors come in and start digging. But I think this is a good okay. end of year. Thank you very much. Um, Christy, thank you for dating these because it really helps so we know which is the most current. Um, I, I got the 126. <coughs> the one I just Which is the one you're, right, that you're working from. Um, total open purchase orders, 272,000. That is all 2014? Yes. There's no That's 13s it. left or 12s. You're wonderful. I love it. I love seeing And it. you should have the list attached. Yeah. I, I didn't bring down the list today, but I it was have, attached yeah. to your original one. I have. I okay. have the prior one that you gave us. Okay. Um, uh, I'm glad the high street culvert money is still there because we're going to need that. The wastewater treatment plant, that is the I and I, Fred? Yes. And when are we going to be through doing that study? Do we have any notion? It's been going on for a while. I just like to know how close the we are. The only added. portion of it that was completed was the or original beach portion. The rest of the town has to be done yet. Okay. All right. That looks <coughs> great. Okay, and I don't have, and uh, just for general public information, the um, traffic signal at Brown Avenue for the fire department, um, it came in at $24,650, and we were able to pay that out of the year end money. So that will be installed to protect the um, fire department when they're pulling out of the station. Uh, great report. I have something on your December. Financials, may I do that part? Yes, ma'am. Because this part is fine. Okay, now this is closing December. May we have at the end, because I know we mentioned this before, as, as well as the recreation fund and the EMS fund, may we have a sheet now showing the sewer buy in? We will start that for 15. How's that? See? For 2015? Yep. Yeah, that will I will be, start. I will add that to my monthly that financials. That wonderful. For I know I'm grabby, but I really want to see the money as it comes in on that, the sewer buy-in. And charge. I didn't bring that number for you, but I know it hasn't changed since the last time yeah, I reported on it. Yeah, but I expect changes. Okay. I expect, good, <laughs> I expect good bills to go to developers on that. Um, I made some yellow marks in here. School resource officers... And this is on the revenue report uh, under charges for services, income from departments. Why are we 22000 short? Do we have any idea? Does that mean that the school has been billed and hasn't paid, or does it mean that we didn't need to charge as much for the school resource officers? I believe that they were short an officer for a while. Oh, I would okay. have to look into that, but I believe we were short, they were short at um, <coughs> one of the schools for a while. That's they correct. I believe an there was an injury. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Good. So. They, yeah, they, they <coughs> one officer covered both for a while. Just yes. Okay. He was doubling at both of the schools. <coughs> well, it kind of jumped out at me, so I figured. And that's just Hampton Schools. That's just SAU 90, right? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't. Uh, this won't incorporate Winnicott, right? Or will it? Well, yeah. we have one at Winnicott also. Yeah, but we bill for that. Oh. And we bill for that, right? Oh, okay. And then under recycled materials down. Uh, we showed we didn't anticipate any revenue, but we got a thousand and nine dollars. So revenue was revenue. And then we've got the parking lot revenues. Now here it's showing that it's seventy six thousand seven sixty seven over. So that's good. Mm -hmm. That's a plus. Uh, franchise fees. Came in higher too, just about five thousand dollars higher, which is good. And the health insurance reimbursement. Are we at the end of the line on that, Fred? Mm -hmm. Do are they? Is the health trust going to owe us any more reimbursement? Every year. Every year. Every year, you will get something back. Could be smaller now. But hopefully. this isn't because of the monkey business they did in the past. This no. is your normal reimbursement that correct. we should have been that's getting. That's correct. That we never got but in the previous one. Okay. That is very nice to see that in I there. I believe that's due to come in at the end of February. Hmm? I think that is due to come in at the end of February, I believe. Good. Good. But it's nice to see that. And then the real estate trust income down on the bottom, uh, $92,000 more than we had anticipated, mm -hmm. which is wonderful, just under $700,000. Um, motor vehicle income, as Christy mentioned, up 4.8%, which is wonderful. Uh, the town clerk's office is doing an incredible job with all this, uh, the extra services they're providing. And I think 
Uh, oh, snow. <clears throat> page eleven of sixteen. Snow and ice removal. <laughs> we went into the red in twenty fourteen by uh, eighteen thousand four hundred and sixty four dollars. The manager at some point can tell us. I'm sure he will keep us up to date, meeting by meeting, on the shortfall already this year for snow removal. Thank you, Christy. Mm -hmm. Sir, thank you for your thorough report. You're thank welcome. you. <laughs> As always, does a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a motion for the hundred and seventy-two thousand one hundred five point two nine and the nine twenty-six four hundred three point two nine. The yeah. former for the open POs, the latter for the warrant articles. Yeah, the nine twenty-six is the actual grand total. It's uh, one seventy-two for the um, purchase orders and seven fifty-four two zero eight. Nine two six four zero three twenty nine. Yeah. Corrected. Thank you. That motion and that was Waddell. I seconded Jim. We'll see. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, 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 fiscal year investment policy. Do you have questions? You know what? I have to honestly say I think I forgot to bring that down, but there are no changes from last year. I can tell you that. It has been reviewed again by the treasurer. Yeah. I I'll hold it in case someone has a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is something questions? that the board does every year yes, by policy. So. And it's good. It's a good yeah. Mr. I'm set. I'm fine. I I read it. So set. All set. Okay. Does that need a motion? Yes, sir. It does. It does yes. A motion. I make the motion. Oh. I'll second, Rick. Right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Director. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> Drive safely. You better run yes. fast, Christy. <laughs> Roman five number two, Jamie Ayod, acting fire chief, departmental update, sir. Oh mercy. Hello again. <coughs> Good evening. Thank you Good. for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak with you tonight. Hampton Fire has been hard at work to address Ms. Woolsey's concerns. We have met with Electric Light. They have assured us that they can um, do the work down at Brown Avenue for the lights and yes. that they will be uh, on budget. They are also telling you that it won't be happening in six feet of snow, so yeah. we're going to be waiting until yeah. spring. Uh, looking at our past year's performance, we had the busiest year on record. We fielded 4,361 calls for service in 2014, and the breakdown is as follows. Fire-related calls, 2,012. EMS-related calls, 2,349. There were 12 calls for structure fires, several calls for other types of fires, including outbuildings, vehicle fires, and outdoor fires. We were called to scores of smoke detector activations, sprinkler activations, and several motor vehicle accidents, one of which was a tractor-trailer unit that rolled over on Route 1 while carrying a full load of wood chips. Yeah. On the emergency medical services side of the house, we have provided expert care to the citizens and visitors of the town of Hampton. Some of these calls for service were for very sick patients indeed. We had 137 calls for cardiac emergencies, including 18 cardiac arrests. There were 352 calls for various sorts of trauma, including motor vehicle accidents involving pedestrians and a workman that fell from the roof of a three-story house on the north side of town. Yeah. We treated 109 people for respiratory emergencies and 28 people for stroke. Oh as you have seen recently in the headlines, Hampton is uh, also experiencing as an ever-present problem related to illicit drug use. We treated 52 drug overdoses last year. Uh. Looking at 2015, we are currently 12% over last year's numbers in terms of call volume. Although it is still early in the year, it is significant <clears throat> since we are outpacing our busiest year on record by greater than 10%. As of this afternoon, we had uh, 232 calls for service for EMS and 209 calls for the fireside. <clears throat> We're pleased to report that we have secured the purchase of four new Zoll cardiac monitors, and we thank you all for your assistance. We anticipate that they will be delivered in the next few weeks. This is not a moment too soon, as the current models are beginning to fail routinely. Mm. We're pleased to welcome Ms. Stephanie Welsh as our new Fire Prevention Secretary. Ms. Welsh started this afternoon and brings with her a significant experience in running a business office. We look forward to having her in the Fire Department when we welcome her. Our crews have been out shoveling hydrants nonstop to Mr. Bartle's point and since the snow began at the end of January. We respectfully ask that the community adopt a hydrant. Please shovel out your nearest hydrant. Precious time is wasted if we need to shovel instead of extinguish a fire. And more on the snow, we have been very conservative, and we have augmented our staffing to provide the best care for the citizens and visitors to the town of Hampton. Most often this means that we're adding an additional ambulance for the duration of the storm, plus staffing to minimum of nine firefighters per shift. Good. 
We have been keeping a close eye on the costs associated with this need, and we are working to keep them as low as possible. However, as I am sure our sister departments, police and DPW, we are all too, are all too keenly aware these weather patterns have put a dent in the budget. Less of an update and more of a public service announcement. Along with the hydrants, we cannot state forcefully enough the need for homeowners and residents to check the exhaust from their direct vent appliances. Mm -hmm. These exhaust vents must remain clear from all snow, including drifting snow. Six inches of snow in the driveway may be four feet of drifting snow up against the side of a structure. And these vents are not always readily visible from your driveway. Please make the effort and verify that they are free and clear. Prevent carbon monoxide buildup in your home. The life you save could be your own. Every occupied floor should have a carbon monoxide detector with fresh batteries. This is just one more level of protection. And last, I would ask that everyone please take the time to check on their elderly and infirm neighbors. This winter has been a lot of work, even for the most able-bodied people. Together, we can make uh, the load a lot lighter for those in need. And I'll answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, um, when you said you're up 12 percent. That's correct. And w when is usually your peak, se is your peak season now? Not even close. Summer. Summertime. Summer. Summertime is when we hit hard. Wow. And uh, we're already up. In, at the end of January, we were up. <laughs> We were up 150 uh, percent. We were 50 calls over, and that number's tapered a little bit. Through the storm, there was less people driving, Two things days. like that. Storms, I should say storms. Um, there were numerous car accidents, but not any uh, of great significance in that time. But in the last three weeks that these storms have been going, we have been um, certainly out there fielding calls. Yeah. So we've done, I think, a total of 93 since January 26th. And not all of them storm-related, but many of them have been. All right, and, and staff-wise, do you feel in good shape? Or no. I mean, uh, like I said, uh, we're, we're staffing to nine. Typically, yeah. we staff to eight. During the storms, we'll staff to nine, bring in the extra person. Uh, we'll also staff two extras on the ambulance. When I do that, I am taking that overtime money directly from the ambulance account. So I feel that I'm being very responsible in the overtime expenditures here. Um, I do feel that it's necessary to have these people on duty because our second ambulance for callback, that we would be waiting for people to come from home, and it's just not safe for them to be driving anyway. If they're here, they can respond to calls directly, and we don't have to wait. There's no delay. Yeah. So in general, we've seen a total staffing of 11 um, with the, with the two personnel for the ambulance. Um, during the blizzard, which... Uh, January 26th <laughs> through yeah, January 26th through the 28th, um, we actually went up to 12, and we put uh, an ambulance down at the beach and had an extra person up here at the uh, headquarters. So we were overstaffed and we were very busy. And then the guys obviously uh, have been out there shoveling hydrants, which is just it's putting a, a burden on them. Right, and so so you know with this increase, I mean, do we figure it's a one-off type situation, or this is something that's going to continue? For the call volume? Yeah, the call volume is... It's hard to say, but 10% is, is a lot. That's a significant call volume. Yeah. Sure, I'm up um, I'm up 12% on the fire side alone, and I'm up uh, 12... I'm sorry, I'm 13% on the fire side, 12% on EMS just today, just by looking at the numbers today compared to last year, which was our busiest year. If we look back to 2013, then it, we're, we're up almost 22%. So we have seen an, a significant increase in call volume. I can't tell you and extrapolate out what that means for our future, but I can tell you that if summer is anything like this winter, if it's the, the polar opposite, we're going to be very busy indeed. Okay. So, so we, need, we really need to keep on top of it and keep thinking about the future and future Absolutely. plans maybe yep. about what we're going to have to do to handle it. I think it. that this would be a, a, a good um, <coughs> petri dish for what's, what proper staffing looks like right. for sure. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Ms. Wilson. You need a minimum of eight more firefighters, but we won't fight over that right now. Um, your report on 2014. Yes, ma'am. I would like a copy, yes, if you don't mind. The, I don't, the board might want a copy. And I would like to see you drop off a copy of that report to the Budget Committee. Okay. So they can be on top of this. Certainly. When you are coming in with your budget in the coming year, et cetera, I think that's excellent information. Um, has the leak at the, or whatever it was, at the beach station been fixed to the contractors to take care of that stuff for you? The answer is yes and no. Uh, yes, they have significantly. And when they thought that they had it, um, they really thought that they had it. They had done a, a tremendous amount of work. We had a storm that had uh, west winds instead of north winds instead of east winds, and that caused a leak again. They are well aware. Ekman has come down again, and okay. they have reevaluated the situation. We have not put back 
together the interior okay. portion. They've had to cut some sheetrock out. Yeah. Um, we're working on drying the insides, and obviously with the weather as it is right now, it's drying on its own. But the <laughs> leaking portion of it, um, that's still to be uh, remedied, hopefully once the once the weather breaks. But they know about it and they're on it. They're standing behind their water. Absolutely they are. Basically. No question. Delightful to hear that you've got those cardiac, or you've got the cardiac monitors coming we can't in. Wait. Have you guys considered, because I've been looking too as I go around, getting taller hydrant markers? Because some of them, really, because the hydrants are marked and sure. you've got the little the up box. there. Yep. But it's reached a point where, I mean, I know we've put higher driveway stakes in our driveway. Certainly. Uh, we should talk to the water company. They're usually the ones that supply those. And yeah. the amount we pay for would you check for yeah, check station. with Carl and see if they can get uh, basically taller yep. hydrant markers. Th there are all sorts on the market. Some are uh, fiberglass with a spring. Some are metal. The problem is the the taller they get, the more leverage they have, mm -hmm. and they become also an object. If they're not taken off in a timely manner, it's oh. something for kids to play on, and oh, they don't last very long. That oh way, dear. So. Because I'm just concerned about sure. the height of the snow that's being pushed in there. Um, thank heaven you have a secretary, thank God, in fire prevention. Uh, how many hours a week? She's going to be working 20 hours a week. Okay. Varied schedule. Okay. And she's got uh, you know, a significant amount of office experience. She's extremely organized, and we look forward to having her for sure. Okay. Um, I had a talk with Peter Weil a couple months ago. Um, on the walk-ins, and of course you have the beautiful new rooms now at both stations for walk-in emergency medical. And I was asking Peter at that time if you guys have a way to keep statistics on walk-ins. We do. That I didn't bring the numbers with me. No, no, no. But you, so you are following up we with are. statistics on the walk-ins because that's mm -hmm. valuable information, I think, because that's taking if you if you have cut your foot and you've gone to the fire station and you have a firefighter tending to you. In the meantime, if there's an ambulance call. He can't just, you know, let you sit there bleeding while he goes out. So that puts a strain on your True. on your manpower response as well. So I would certainly be interested to see the statistics on walk-ins annually. <coughs> and do it every We've year. had a very high-profile case. Um, young man or young man uh, was at home and had an issue. Was dealt with at home. Uh, had a similar issue two weeks later with an arrhythmia, cardiac arrhythmia, mm -hmm. and he was with his wife driving. And uh, this was in the papers. You may have read about it. He stopped at the fire station, went into our walk-in medical aid room, right. and was treated in there prior to his um, transport to the hospital. Right. So but they are functional. But They're that's taking the time of your e EMS personnel, and, and God knows it's a wonderful public service. It certainly is. But that is, because uh, I had a long talk with Peter, and he's sure. doing a great job, by the way. He, was, he very much cares uh, about what he's doing yes. there. But I think that's a wonderful service, but it is also tying up personnel time that might interfere with a fire call, et cetera. Uh, I think I have, and I got a message today. I appreciate your heads up on keeping vents clear. Unitil, I got a message from Unitil. You guys probably did too about keeping things clear so that you're not suffocating everybody in the house. That's a good, in fact, can you put that, can the chief put that on the uh, uh, town web page under public works? Certainly can. I, I do believe that uh, I do believe that Chief Sawyer is taking part of that because we did a, uh, a unified press release, and I do believe that that was part of. That I was thinking time. we can put that right. I didn't see it on the on the town that website, the but it might not be a, a bad idea to have it's that on there. there. And um, gee, I think I ran out of stuff. But thank you, uh, yes, great job. Thank you, ma'am. And I really look forward to seeing those 2014 response responses. Certainly in print that's good sure. so typically when there's a storm there is increased volume <laughs> there's in yes absolutely so there's not always increased staff <laughs> mm -hmm. we've, we've made that decision be based on the need obviously because <coughs> as this gets progressively worse and the more time it's going to take if you if you drive down to the beach right now and you look at some of the buildings they're vacant and if they have a problem and believe me i'm not asking for it but if there was a problem down at the beach right now we have to climb six-foot snow banks just to get to the structures yeah. to evaluate them. Yeah. So that's personnel heavy. So we've made a decision to put on extra personnel. So mm -hmm. the volume goes up. It th that doesn't always mean that the staffing goes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, I ha I don't see why, you know, considering the volume's up now, what that has to do with the rest of the year. Because it's not going to snow all summer. 
No, but Mr. Griffin, I can tell you that as of January 27th, we ran the numbers between January 27th, 2014, uh, January 1st and 27th of 2014 compared to January 1st and January 27th, 2015, no snow yet. Um, our numbers in 2014 were 99 calls, and in 2015 we were 152. Ah, so yeah. that was no snow, that was no storms. We're just, we're seeing a peak volume. We were actually higher percentage-wise before the blizzard. So I, I have no accounting for that except that we're busier right now. Yeah, because I think there's less business going on in the beach area than last year mm. or ever in any other year I've been here. I mean, the Ashworth isn't open. There's very few businesses open. So I don't really see uh, why there would be, unless it's just so, some sort of a strange thing. I don't think there's that as much action as there usually is. But whatever. Um, I... Uh, also got that call from Unitel, and they said something about keeping your water uh, meters uncovered by the snow. What does that do if they're covered? The electric meters. Yeah, the electric meters. Well, you need well, to, yeah. What electric meter? Yeah. Brush the meter, though. Don't shovel. That's what I meant. They right. want to keep them open just so they can get to them if they have to. Yeah. yeah. So Certainly. there's no danger no as far as as that goes they're weather tight yeah. the electric meters are weather tight most water meters are in the home and they're read by a small little puck that you see on the outside of the home yeah. um the electric meters are weather tight and the the reason is that obviously they're going to be reading them second if there is an emergency god forbid there's a fire in the home we will call the utilities and they may end up pulling yeah. the meters that's their decision one other thing you can worry about your meters is if you have an ice dam on your roof or, you, or you're, you're clearing snow off your roof and you dump that snow down you could clear your meter off yep. either your electric meter or your gas yeah. meter Ouch. and that's where it's important yeah. to make sure you have those covered and cleared yeah. because your gas meter I mean we've had that happen before. we have and, and if, if I may so like Mabrera brings up a good point and I know that has been brought up about roofs and the discussion of shoveling off a roof there's been discussion at the uh, fire marshal's office as early as today or as late as today um, New Hampshire has stricter building codes than say South Carolina we're anticipating to have this much snow, at least, you know, not maybe in one day, but certainly over the course of the winter. And the roofs are designed to shed this snow, to tolerate the snow. Um, too many people are deciding that they're going to get up and take care of the snow problem when it's not a problem. The building was designed for it. <coughs> There's a significant risk to going up on a roof and shoveling snow, though, that, that can't be accounted for. Um, slip and falls, for instance, and it's certainly a, a long way down. So we caution anybody from doing that if they're not mm. building experts. But they'll fall in a soft snowbank. They may. They may. I yeah, it is a rock. Where I used to live, we had a, a case where somebody went up to shovel a roof, went head first into the snowbank, and thank God his wife looked out the window and saw him. <laughs> you don't know. Got him. He would have. Yep. Suffocated. <laughs> yeah. So it's not a. It's not an amateur <clears throat> job. It's certainly not an amateur job. <laughs> Mr. Griffin. No. Thank Mr. you. Biden. The only thing I'd like to uh, reiterate what the, uh, the chief said was. Check on your neighbors. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, this is an important time of year. And even if if you don't know them and you don't feel comfortable doing that, call a fire department. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to go check on you if, if you feel it's an issue. So, absolutely. We do well-being checks all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so do police. And, you know, we usually work in conjunction with each other. <laughs> the, the idea that we're all getting a little bit of cabin fever is certainly there. But yeah. the people who can't help themselves get out. Imagine now, if you've been shoveling for five and six days, you've taken away the brunt of that snow. Some of these people are living indoors. They haven't opened their front door in that much time. Uh, in the summertime, it's wonderful to see mailmen and paper boys. They call us and they say, hey, listen, i got three papers in the driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, the mail's been yeah. walking up. And so that's real great effort on their part. However, we don't see that right now. Yeah. Instead, we'll see the snow piled up against the front door. If that's the case, shovel it out, knock on the door, make sure everybody's okay. Mm -hmm. You can't open it, especially if you're infirm. You can't open that door from the inside very easily. So, yeah. All set. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir, would you please email the board uh, your year-end 2013 uh, and your year 2014 good. data? Um, and we appreciate the operational intensity and the demand on your department, and we appreciate your leadership this winter. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I We're appreciate fortunate it. to have you. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate Actually, it very much. email to the chairman of the budget committee. You shouldn't have to print it so. out or whatever. Yeah. Yes. To share that. All Thank right, Chief. That's Thank great. you all. Have a great Thank night. You, Please sir. be safe. Roman five appointments. Number three, Mike St. Laurent, Alpha Half at the Hamptons Half Marathon, sir.
Evening. Morning. Good evening. I don't know if you're as sore as I am from shoveling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we got 14 and a half inches. Uh, today I'm um, going before the board for our annual Half of the Hamptons Half Marathon, which um, is scheduled currently for February 22nd, but we're thinking that uh, due to the high snow banks, uh, mm -hmm. we may opt for a March 15th date. Um, I'm nervous about uh, runners going by and people not being able to see. Backing up, I'm nervous about race marshals on the road, I'm nervous about um, yeah. water stop, kids are out with water stops, I'm nervous about the police that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, the, the permit is for the 22nd of February, however, we're very much inclined, 95% right now, to think that it will be March 15th. Just because of the snow, we, we feel the snow banks will be a lot snower, slower by then, mm. smaller by then, and the uh, roads will be a lot wider by then, <coughs> but I can get into the race now. Um, Whichever date it is, the race will start at 10 a.m. It does a loop around the Beach District, and then it heads out north on Ocean Boulevard all the way up to High Street. It stays in the northbound lane. It takes a left on High Street and cuts over to Little River, to Mace, up to Mill, and then back down Barber on Little River for a bit and Woodland, and then it cuts over Great Gate to Juniper and Huckleberry and out. Now, there are a couple of improvements that um, were are proposed that we're going to be trying to do is one of them is uh, we've told the runners that at one point in the race or two points in the race we may actually slow down a group of runners so that, that if cars are stuck for more than 15 minutes we'll get the cars out um, and uh, we've seen this done before at not one other race only one other race uh, reached the beach relay which has 4,000 runners in it they're told to stop at route one to cut across and I've told that on the front of the web page and I'll be sending a note out to a thing it'll probably only affect two percent of the runners because we only need to do it two or three times and we'll be doing it at the Little River place and also where we come out of Huckleberry and Route 1A. Uh, the second thing that was asked of us by the board last year is we will do a mailer um, actually I'm going to print a second mailer so it has a correct date on it for so we'll March 15th that will go to 4,400 people everybody along the route and have the electronic messaging boards as well as the signs that we do the Monday before the race. Um, the nice thing about this race is, uh, and working with the um, local groups that we work with, that we fill up five of the food pantries in town with the help of the Rotary Club um, with all the food stocks that they need, as well as give money to the uh, Hampton Area Rotary, the uh, Kids Track Team, the, and the Chem Free Program. Hey, uh, probably the 15th, right? What's that? Fifteenth, it'll be, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I'm very, I'm very sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was waiting to talk to the police about it because I told, I suggested it. Yeah, but I haven't heard back from them, but I just want to. I always check with them first. I haven't heard back, but we're, we're pushing for the fifteenth. Yeah, right. I mean, it just seems. How many, how many runners do you anticipate? We usually get a thousand to twelve hundred okay. that run the race. All right. All right. So yeah, and it, you've got it well planned out, and you're working in conjunction with the police. Yeah. Fine with me. Good. Okay. Select my Wilson. No. So what happens if there's um, sn a lot of uh, snow piles on the 15th of March? <laughs> uh, then I give them a, an entry to one of my other races and just say it's it. We canceled it one year and it just didn't hold. So it can be canceled. Yeah, it can be canceled. Yeah. Okay. But there won't be a lot of snow. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you're a brave man. So I think eternal optimist. I think uh, Is that a you run a great, yeah. great event year after year after year. And, yeah. uh Thank you. I think it's a good event to come to Hampton. Uh, it's a, uh, it brings a lot of people to Hampton. I, I agree that I think the 15th is probably better than February yeah. 22nd. Uh, I think it would help out both not only your runners, but the police department. I'm sure that's what they're going to tell you. But, yeah. so, but thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Welch, any comments? No, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. You take we need a motion to approve that? Yes, you do. You did? I make a motion to approve it. Second. And I would add this uh, amendment that it is uh, weather dependent. Yeah. Weather dependent and okay. subject to the um, uh, decision making of Mr. Welch and department heads. Yep, correct. Yeah. Good. All those in favor? Yes. Thank nope. you. Opposed. Oh, second motion is opposed. I'm sorry. Four to one. Four to one. Thank you. You can pass it. So Thank you. I will. Those are the three. I'll be happy to pass okay. it over to my <laughs> colleague. Five there you appointments. Go. Mr. Coronati. Mr. Sorry. Please, gentlemen. 
We've got three issues down here. First, we'll start with 86 Woodland Road, request for steep name, ownership of hydrant, ownership of streetlights. Gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, Bill Coronati, Jones and Beach Engineers, uh, here to represent 86 Woodland Road, and we have uh, we have submitted a request for a street name to the, the board, um, and there's we gave three options on the names. The the owner of the property's um, first choice is uh, Magnolia, um, and um, then I I think the second one was Harmony, and the third one was uh, was Robertson, uh, named after uh, Wanda Robertson. The uh, so the um, former town council. Yes, and um, there is a list of town of uh, road names approved by the town. However, I think there's only one road name left on that list, and it's uh, Benjamin Sweat Drive, and the uh, the owner does not desire to name his name Benjamin Sweat Drive, and uh, unfortunately, but the uh, so it came up with three other options, and we're at the board's pleasure. What happened to Hilliard? I thought we voted on Hilliard already. That was for Scott. Was that for Susan Scott's? Yes, I think so. Yes. I think. Yes. That's the Winnicott Road. Oh. Is there a motion for the owner's preference uh, for a street name? Mm. I would like to see it go with Robinson Drive. Um, may I make a comment on that? Yep. Member Fire Captain Bernie Robertson. Bernie Robertson. I. I uh, we have not named a street after him. He was a long-standing employee Deputy firefighter. that uh, had a heart attack and, and, and passed away Correct. in this town. Um, so I, I think Robertson Drive is, is a good name, not only both for Bernie, but also for Wanda. Mm -hmm. There's, there is a Roberts Drive. Roberts, yep. Mm -hmm. We know that. And I'm not sure of the spelling of uh, Robertson. R O B E R T S O N. Correct. So I'll make that motion. There's a motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Um, One, two, three. I'm totally opposed to this whole development. I re I'm okay, not we're talking voting strictly them. about the name. I understand that. Okay, there's. Uh, it doesn't need a name. Favor. There's one opposed. Mr. Griffin, where are you? Abstain. And Mr. Griffin abstains. Mm. Ownership of Hydra. We have, uh, this development is, with this new proposed road, there is one, one proposed hydrant uh, located close to the cul-de-sac. And uh, the, all five of the lots are protected by fire hydrants. Either the one on site provides protection to most of the lots, but there's also one off site that provides coverage to the first house. Um, and so there is only one hydrant required. Does Aquarian not own the hydrant? Why are we talking about ownership of the hydrant? For the uh, maintenance of the hydrant, <coughs> future maintenance of the hydrant. Mr. Waddell? Um, future payment of no. The Questions? No. I think if Aquarian owns the hydrant, doesn't it maintain it? Are they yes. letting somebody else fool around with their hydrant? I mean that literally. Uh, I'm asking if you have any questions for yeah. Mr. Sorry. Mr. Carnot. I believe the reason is that there's a yearly payment that the town has to make to Aquarian for each hydrant. Yes. Therefore, the selectmen have to approve any new hydrants. Yeah. And that's right. why we're here. But it's not a matter of maintenance. Aquarian will own the hydrant. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Griffin, any questions? No. Mr. Brad. I believe he's correct, but I'd like to hear from the town manager. And we're going to him next. Okay. Mr. Welch. Oh, okay. <laughs> <coughs> well, I, th I think that... Uh, with regards to the hydrants and the streetlights, uh, you should take those under advisement. Mm -hmm. um, we have a budget that's going to be approved, maybe, mm -hmm. depending on which one it is. Um, that may have a bearing on, on, on appropriations and the amount of money available to expend. Uh, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm completely in favor of the hydrant because that's an essential thing. Um, but I want to get the money to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So. I would suggest, and, and uh, um, 
Public Works suggests that we take those two items under advisement until we at least know what the budget's going to be. Yeah. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. Uh, well, we don't need a motion. We're not doing anything. So oh. we're um, going to um, leave ownership of the hydrant, um, and we're going to discuss, uh, please, ownership of hydrants. Hmm? Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, or, or I thought we were lights. taking both under advisement. I thought that's uh, what the Mr. Mayor Welch said. Mr. Welch had a comment. These gentlemen right. are here. It's on the agenda. They had to talk. Oh, okay. Sir, the, um, during the approval process, the um, planning board requested that we have a street light at the entrance of our road yep. and at the termination of the road and that the, uh, and like, and I, I'm speaking for the, the planning board, but they, <clears throat> they felt that the, like most streets in town of Hampton that have taxpayers living on them, that the street lights are paid for by the town. So they uh, asked us to come before this board to ask the town to accept the two street lights proposed within the subdivision. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. No. Ms. Wilson. Street lights on utility poles? Uh, the one, what we're proposing is the one on the front, there is a utility pole right at the corner of the road, so that could be on the pole. Yeah. There would be one at the end of the cul-de-sac that would be, I think, more of a uh, Unitil's decorative, I believe they have a decorative style light. I'm not a, they have two different styles that they can put in. Um, and so one where looks. is it, where does the wiring go? The wiring's within the street. They're in the street? Under the street? What? Yes, under the street. Ah. Sir. So, and uh, so these are decorative street lights? I believe, yes, one of them would be a decorative street light. The other one would be more of a, um, a standard street light off of, off a of wooden utility pole at the entrance. Yeah. It seems like that um, this isn't something that the town usually does, especially a decorative street light. Does that ever happen? We have decorative mm -hmm. street lights that the town owns. I guess you'd call them like, the town and country fixtures on uh, Church Street and, and yeah. Highland and, and so forth. But and that's different. I don't know what style mm -hmm. is decorative. Yeah. Because I, those I were bought by the precinct. Uh, and the town together, yeah. 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 Thank you. Sir. I'm all set. I think until we uh, see what our budget is, I think we have to mm -hmm. reserve these until yeah, a later time. I don't want to bite a bullet until I know I've got to. Thank you. So. Bravo. 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 26 N Street. One, permission to work in the town right of way, <laughs> sir. Uh, let me switch my plans over here. The, uh, this is a... Uh, a condominium development located on N Street, uh, yeah. 20 unit condominium development. Right now it's four lots, as you can tell by uh, Mr. Chairman reading off the, the, the lot numbers. Uh, those lots are going to be merged, and all the structures on those four parcels are going to be removed. And with that, uh, we only need one driveway instead of the four driveways that are there. So we're going to be building. Uh, new sidewalk on N Street, uh, quite a bit of it on N Street, so it'll be a long length of, uh, of sidewalk that'll exist. And we're here to have the uh, selectmen uh, allow us to do the work in the street as well as take over the uh, sidewalk when we're completed. Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell. Not right now, no. Schools. In the CMA, let's see, the uh, town planner's memo to you Joe, January 30th, and uh, he's talking both 128 Ashworth and 3133 Ocean Boulevard, um, and this came in under, let me look at this, it's a lot stuck here, he's talking about the uh, work, the town would have to step in and repair the sidewalk along Ocean Boulevard and the work on P Street. And this relates to if the project were to fail, he wants to see an expanded, appropriately sized bond in a place that includes off-site work. Why would you be getting us involved in something that has to do with Ocean Boulevard? The state owns Ocean Boulevard and the sidewalk on the west of Ocean Boulevard. What that's relevance has that? I think that's a different proposal. That's the, yeah, the that's other proposal? Okay, 31 then I'll, to 33. I'll get back to that then. Okay. Does this have any impact on Ocean Boulevard at all? No. I just can't see it from here. 
It does not. No, it's okay. only on M Street. Okay. So the sidewalk it would be what? <coughs> it would be concrete. Okay. And who's going to maintain it? The town would. The town would? The town hasn't maintained any of its other concrete sidewalks. I think, uh, uh, is that going to be sealed after the concrete is concrete sidewalk is installed? Is there a provision for sealing the concrete? At there is. I, when you said maintain, I referred to, I, I assume you mean sh plow, take care of it when it breaks I'm not down. talking about that. Sealing I'm talking about the sidewalk itself, if it falls apart. And one problem we've had with sidewalks is that they haven't been appropriately sealed after they've been installed. It's a, I imagine we couldn't main, uh, require that on a continuing basis, but I believe uh, we can require that the uh, sidewalk, if you put in a concrete sidewalk, be sealed at whatever appropriate time frame after that's installed. There is part of the conditions relate, part of the planning board's conditions relate to the sealing of the right. sidewalk one, one year okay. after installation. And, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to take these item by item, but part of this I should mention has to do with some utility work in, under the sidewalk as well. Um, so I just want to mention that, that there is a, a petition to uh, put some of the overhead electri electrical lines oh, underground across go, the yeah. front of this uh, uh, lot. And then they'll, obviously they have to come back up on the, so basically the lines will go to a pole, it'll go under, down the pole, run down the, under the sidewalk up another pole at the other end of the project and then continue back to the uh, and continue with the overhead electricity and all the homes on the other side of the street will still be serviced hmm. and we've worked that out with surge from Unitil and the developers will be installing all that at his expense and uh, and so that's part of this um, one thing is the sidewalk and the other is the utility poles and, and the power okay, lines. so you're into the pole petition uh, as well now go back to yeah the I, just to clear of chocks mr. Waddell any as we no, go around the room, no. one, two. No, okay, Ms. Mrs. Woolsey. Poll petition. Any questions on that? No. Okay, Mr. Griffin. Mine is the uh, memo from Chris Jacobs, December 31st, <coughs> in reference to the, where the poles are going to be placed mm. and how they are placed within the sidewalk. And are you, have you seen this? I don't recall seeing that, but if they. Um, it's just uh, they, they don't want to have it so that they want to have them behind the sidewalk instead of in the middle of the sidewalk mm -hmm. for, uh, for uh, ADA compliance and stuff. Uh, part of the, uh, I, under, I, I, did, I do recall seeing that. The hard part with that is that the, um, the backs of the sidewalks are typically uh, buildings almost mm -hmm. right there. And these, um, like most of the streets down at the beach, the um, lettered streets, there's three-phase power. And there's spreader arms on the top of these poles that are sometimes uh, eight to ten feet wide. Uh -huh. And right now they're located on the front edge of the sidewalk. And if you move them back, it puts the lines out of alignment, but it also puts them uh, over the neighbor's properties and over some of the buildings. Good grief. So I think that's part of the issue with moving them to the back of the sidewalk. Plus, the, it's hard to realign a road because they have to be... Mm straight runs and they're all set up to the uh, at the front edge but <coughs> I just know we've, we've we've spent a lot of money down the beach over the years on mm -hmm. sidewalks and yep. uh, some of the some of the poles down there have been ending up right in the middle of the sidewalks and stuff like that and uh, any time that we've tried to replace them we're going to try to see that we make sure that they're uh, hmm. On the inside of the sidewalk, so that we can one, you can plow it, make it easier. But two, yeah, is it's not encroaching on the the width of the sidewalk. Right. That, would, are, that would be my only concern. You know, the uh, one of the with working with the planning board and the public works, we are actually installing slightly wider sidewalks. Uh, Chris has uh, he's requiring that now we have five feet of concrete. In addition to the curb, the six-inch wide mm, curb yeah. for five and a half feet, which uh, which the ones that are out there are typically basically four and a half feet wide with a six-inch, and I think that's to address some of those concerns with the with the plowing if if he does plow or maintain the uh, 
Okay. Sidewalk, it allows a little more space. I just want to make sure you were aware of this, and that's, that's yes. why. That's fine. Thank, you. Thank you. Mr. Welch, your comments, 1416, 1820, 22, and 26 End Street, permission to work in the town right of way in poll petition. It's, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's a quite energetic project, I have to admit. Um, I know that Public Works still has some questions that they need to address the electric utility, which may change the poll petition. Um, it seems to me that, first of all, uh, the entire current sidewalk has to be removed. You're going to have to excavate the 36 inches, the entire width of the sidewalk, the entire frontage of the building that's proposed, and then put conduit in. It looks to me as if you've got um, one uh, triple bank conduit, uh, which runs straight through, and, and, and two uh, triple bank conduits that run down the pole and do a transformer and then back out and back up to the pole again uh, further up the street and there's a pull hole there. Um, that's the, the problem. The uh, Public Works wants to see the design of the pull hole because if they're going to plow the street and maintain the sidewalk or have to do something out there, they don't want to hit it with uh, uh, a heavy piece of equipment and all of a sudden tear the top off it, right. uh, which could happen and we don't want that to happen. So they've asked me to take this under, have the board take this under advisement until mm -hmm. they can get, get some questions answered with regards to this. Um, they would have done it sooner, but unfortunately, most of our uh, folks that were working on this have been out with uh, that flu that's been going around, and nobody's yes. very happy with that. Uh, they're, most of them are back to work at this point, so they're, once we get the, uh, the uh, snow problem straightened out that we've had the last few days, and they can get back to work on this and get together with you and the utility, and, and um, depending on what happens, the poll petition may have to be <coughs> modified for that purpose. So I want to... I don't want the board to approve it all right now. We know it's going to get done, um, but we want to make sure when it, before they approve it that it's the only approval they have to give and you don't have to come back again. So mm. we're requesting they take it under advisement for those reasons. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Mr. Coronati, proposed sidewalk modifications? For the uh, end street? Or 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 26. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what the, you just said. Uh, that's basically just the, without the electricity, Electrical uh, conduits, that's just the uh, sidewalk improvements, the removal of what's out there, and the rebuilding of basically mm -hmm. a longer, uh, newer sidewalk. Thank you. Mr. Welsh just addressed that. And the proposed bonding uh, for sidewalk improvements? We have submitted a, uh, a bond to the town for review for, for the off-site improvements. Uh, the bond amount, uh, with a 10% contingency, it's $13,700, and this would be for the the work within the, uh, the sidewalk work within the town right away. Thank you. And that's pretty straightforward. Mr. Welch, any comment? Uh, no. Public Works is, is reviewing the bond amount. Uh, we don't have a response back from them yet because of the snow emergencies that we're going through. Thank you. Gentlemen, and just I'll come back to you, Mrs. Uh, Wilson. Uh, do you have any questions for Mr. Welch as you prepare for your, your uh, customer, your client? No? Okay. Yes, Ms. Wilson. That brings to mind another thought. Now, with the utility running underground, what happens if that gets messed up? What liability does the town have there? None. No liability if that's all messed up and Unistil has to dig it up, whatever? They, they have a permit. They have a permit for the location of that utility, and um, they're required to maintain it. We just want to make sure that everything that needs to be in the permit is there for their construction. Yeah. I just want to make sure that there's no liability to the town once the development is completed and everybody goes bye-bye. Well, I, I think one of the things that will have to be done is, and we we'll have to arrange this with the building department and with the electric, electric company, is that there needs to be a full-time inspector there. Well, this, this work is ongoing. I have no idea, uh, and I know Public Works has no idea at this point as to whether or not uh, the requirements of the utility are to encase these conduits in concrete, which is normally done, uh, particularly since you're going to have high voltage wires running through this. Are yeah. there 4160 running out there? There is, uh, there is three phase on the on the street. So it's for either 138 or 4160, one of the two. Yeah. So... Um, that's very particular in how, how it's constructed and what needs to happen. Usually they're encased in concrete. Uh, and there needs to be some real fine work done with regards to compaction mm -hmm. uh, of that material uh, before the sidewalk is put back so that those mm -hmm. conduits 
are really firm. They don't move. They're very dangerous if they do. There's also special markings that need to be put underneath the concrete and so forth. So I know Public Works is going to be very interested in that, and I'm sure the building department, uh, from, from an inspection standpoint, will be too. But we just want to make sure everything runs correctly right. so that this one shot, get it done, get it over with. Mr. Walsh, I, I appreciate that, but what I'm saying is you're, you're talking about the construction period, and I appreciate that. It's good to keep an eye on it. But 10 years from now, something fails under there, whose responsibility is it going to be? The conduit and the, um, the wires are going to be owned by Unitel or their successor. So it's Unitel's problem? It's Unitel's problem to maintain it and, and to uh, keep it in good working order. I just don't want to have to pay for. Yeah, that's what the re permit's for. Repairing the underground service. No, okay. no, that's well, that's not going to be our our requirement. I'd rather ask now than cry later. I agree. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. One twenty-eight Ashworth Avenue, driveway opens. Do you, uh, do you mind if I just ask a question on? The Please, no, I don't mind at all. I'm sorry. Uh, so, does that mean, um, just for clarity, I have to come back? We we will have to come back once. Uh, I don't think I have to come back. I think it's just a matter of answering the questions uh, and having the board approve it. All right. And the same with 128 Ashworth. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we don't have the uh, <clears throat> the information from our, our people with regards to the bond, so it can't be approved tonight either. Okay. Once that comes in, I think that's just a formality. We continue it. comes back to the board with the DPW uh, recommendation for approval, and we move forward. All right. Great. Do you have any questions for Mr. Welch for 128 Ashworth Avenue, what his requirements through his department heads will be? Uh, I, I do not. I think it's very similar to the last one. That one's simpler yeah. in the sense it's only a sidewalk. Thank you. Right. And questions from the board, Mr. Waddell on 128. Set. What's the question on the driveway openings? I believe it's just a, we have two curb cuts in the street. That's correct. Okay, but I can't see it from. I mean, Sorry, yes. from here. What? Onto what? Right onto Ashworth Avenue. You're yes. talking. Yeah. So those curb cuts do not exist now. There's only one currently. There's possible. one there now. That will be discontinued and two new ones will be made okay. uh, for the underground parking, or the under building parking. Okay. But <coughs> Ashworth Avenue. Okay. So why is the, let me see, oh, here. Um, from Jody Strickland to Jason Bashand, and this is January 30th. We've reviewed the cost estimate submitted by Jones and Beach engineers for sidewalk elements of 128 Ashworth Avenue, et cetera. Um, the plans used in the cost estimates for these projects appear to reflect superseded drawings and not the approved plans. For example, it appears that the cost estimates for projects do not reflect the correct mix of concrete and bituminous sidewalks. And the amount of sidewalk has increased on some projects from the plans used in the estimates. Does that mean that the sidewalk in this location would be the same as the P Street, uh, N Street location <coughs> where Public Works is asking for a wider, a five foot wide plus the granite curbing? I, to be honest with you, I, I, I checked these all myself because mm -hmm. I was concerned about that comment and um, I'm I'm not 100% sure, and I tried to reach uh, Jody today, and I was unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think some of it may have been that we added the sidewalk on our property on Auburn Ave and Auburn Ave Extension mm -hmm. as part of the. And I'm not sure if she was confused by the 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 small amount of sidewalk that we were bonding versus the large amount okay. of sidewalk that she was seeing on the plan. So the concrete the, sidewalk mm -hmm. would face Ashworth <laughs> Avenue, but what and hook up? With, I just literally don't remember down there bituminous sidewalk would be the hot top so you're you're going to marry a concrete sidewalk in front of this development on Ashworth Avenue to hot top sidewalk going along the rest of the way no, I, I don't believe, understand it I believe all this I think all the sidewalk on Ashworth is concrete yeah That's I don't correct. Yeah, I wonder where the bituminous right. side came in yeah you're building a private sidewalk down Auburn Avenue and down Auburn Avenue extension. And that's hot top? Door. That's also concrete. Right. Oh. And, and that's going to be sealed as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it, okay. There, that's there have be been numerous revisions to the plans, but I don't, this is be the pervious, latest. That's pervious sidewalk. That'll oh, really? be impervious. Impervious. We, we went to the uh, zoning board and received a variance okay. to allow yeah. it to be okay. standard concrete. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen, any further questions? No. On, on, the, on the sidewalk, did you see the email from the deputy fire chief, or the uh, deputy fire chief, in reference to 
where the sidewalks are placed? I did not know. He just has a concern about the, the narrow width of Auburn Ave extension and yes. Auburn Ave and uh, getting the emergency equipment down the road. These sidewalks are going to be placed on the property. They're going to be on their property. They're so. on their property. They are not in the street. Right. And I think that's what the deputy was just clarifying. Right. Oh, they, good. They yeah, they plan to show them clearly as being on their property. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, good. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, you all set? I believe so. So once the once the bonds are reviewed, the board will. Yeah, I'll, I'll here give them a, a little nudge tomorrow. All right. When I meet with them. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, we have a bunch more of these to come back for. So whatever we. I don't think you'll need to come back. I think that's we we can do that outside the meeting and refine yeah. that and and uh, come to a conclusion and just have it come back for final board approval. All right. Well, I, I guess I mean that there is uh, two other projects that. Yes. That I believe have to come in, but if they don't. You want to, uh, and those are the ones I think you were referring to. Miss Wolseley was the 31 uh, Yeah, we'll address those other projects when it's right. better weather, perhaps. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're all in a hurry to start March 1st. Of course, they are. They keep telling me <laughs> May 1st. Maybe well, we can find the sidewalk yeah. by March 1st. <laughs> Good night, Thank gentlemen. Thank you, Thank Thank you again. Roman 6, approval of minutes, January 22, 2015. I will move approval January 22 minutes. I'll second. We'll see Waddell. Any comments? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I will move approval of our minutes January 29, 2015. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 7, Town Manager's Report, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <coughs> I received a request today from the Hampton Conservation Commission. Um, they would like permission of the selectmen to use the uh, lower portion of the town hall on uh, Saturday, February 21st, uh, from 1 to 2. They're going to uh, hold a, um, a small meeting down here. They're going to hold a snowshoe event uh, at 12 shares uh, from 1 to 2. And then they're, they're looking for um, <coughs> to come back here and hold a uh, a small meeting and serve hot chocolates and snacks following the outdoor event. They'd like the board's permission to do that. Nine? For one to one to two. One to two. On Saturday. I think it'd be nice if they patronized uh, some of the local establishments that um, provide hospitality services, but that's just my opinion. My only concern with having refreshments down here is we we have the new carpet here and we've already and then uh, yeah they can we, we we've already kept posted that we're not supposed to be eating in here right other than water um, that would be my only concern yeah we have this, I share the same concern because mm -hmm. in the past uh, uh, I know from meetings uh, one of the reasons we replaced the carpet one it was very old and starting to fall apart but. Uh, during meetings, mm -hmm. um, various boards, committees, and commissions in here, we see people bring yeah. uh, drinks and so forth in, coffees and hot chocolate and so on and so forth, and spill them on the floor. Yep. And there's no way to get the stain out of the carpets. And that's that's my only concern. I, I don't have a problem with them using space. Um, the, the concern would be yeah. spilling stuff in here. And, the, and we, we already have it posted that they're not supposed to yeah. do that. Right. Eat before you come. Sort of. Or frequent another establishment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Free enterprise, perhaps. Mr. Welch, continuing. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, I received a communication this afternoon from uh, our public works director. And just so folks in town know, they are working diligently uh, to try to correct some of the problems, particularly down the beach where the streets are exceedingly narrow because of all the snow and the plowing. Uh, tomorrow morning, um, uh, forces are going to be coming in, and uh, they plan to start two snow removal operations starting at 7 a.m. Uh, they'll, they'll be working uh, both in the lettered and the numbered streets. Uh, they'll have loaders. They'll have two to three triaxle trucks, and they'll be, they'll be removing the snow from the streets. Um, one operation will start the, on, at Island Path and continue to the west side of the lettered streets. The other operation will start at Boar's Head and continue north to the North Shore area and clear out all those streets. Um, 
this is a top priority and the contractor will be taking the snow off site uh, probably to the uh, Ashworth parking lot and the uh, Island Path parking lot for storage until it melts which we hope is soon as far as snow fighting operations are concerned our crews will be back in tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. to start the day removing snow and, and plowing snow um, I think everybody knows that uh, they have been working more or less around the clock for several days uh, taking periodic times off for a quick nap and something to eat so uh, I think they've been doing a terrific job and they've moved an awful lot of a lot of a lot of material um, as far as uh, what's what's been on the street and what what's what's happened and and all the different things that need to occur in order to move this snow um, this is a, an unusual storm on the part of the town uh, we don't often get these kinds of storms one right on top of the other but I will tell people we have a forecast for two more of them coming one on Thursday mm. into Friday and one on Saturday into Sunday huh. um, so please bear with us uh, we're trying as hard as we can I will say that the entire snow budget was spent over a week ago oh, yeah. the entire hundred and fifty thousand dollars was gone more than a week ago mm -hmm. and, and as far as the snow removal operations are concerned the minimum cost to us is six thousand four hundred dollars per day mm. and we figure it's going to take the better part of two weeks to clear all these streets out so we're spending a considerable amount of money we have to do it because the fire department and the police department and the ambulance people need access to these buildings and it's the only effective way that we have of getting that type of access mm -hmm. um, we do have some private streets in town that are that are fire lanes and and emergency lanes <clears throat> and we would ask people to please 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 remove their cars we tried to clear one out the other night uh, there are two apartment buildings on that particular street someone had parked their car there and it got completely buried in snow we couldn't even get our smallest front end loader by it so and I believe police departments arranged to have that removed and it's been removed by now mm. and we've cleared that street out uh, but please do not park in the roadways your car will be towed we have no choice um, and I did have something here uh, for those of you who <coughs> frequent the uh, high street parking lot please do not turn into Swain's Court off Route 1 you won't be able to access the parking lot because of the amount of snow that's mm. been pushed down that end yeah. that snow will be removed it's just going to take some time to do it we know that it will melt and cause problems further down Route 1 on the buildings on that side so we are going to remove all that snow and truck mm -hmm. it away it has to it has to disappear uh, the town last week uh, participated in a uh, with our state senator and our representatives and a number of other uh, representatives from other communities uh, to testify in a bill to repeal the air and water pollution control statute that reduces the taxability of Seabrook station by reducing its valuation to Hampton by 63 million dollars mm. uh, that bill is currently pending in the legislature as of today um, the word was that the bill may very well be taken under advisement and sent to a study committee for the summer <laughs> don't know what's going to happen with it but that's one of the one of the uh, costs that we uh, have to put up with in trying to get things done I'll also make the statement that uh, we should thank our senator and our state representatives they've been very busy in Concord working for the town and doing a lot an awful lot of work uh, trying to keep things running up there and uh, trying to share all the things that are necessary to get the state budget running and in good shape um, I will say that uh, just just so you know the the budget for the um, the town at uh, is a hundred and sixty thousand five hundred and sixty five dollars for winter snow and we're substantially over that by tens of thousands of dollars at this point mm. so that should be enough good news for the night thank you mr chairman thank you sir mr Waddell. fine uh following up on fred's comment and i just gave rusty a copy that i took out of the seacoast sunday yesterday excellent editorial yes. on the pollution control uh, situation um and also there's a nice article in there on senator styles and what some of the uh, representatives are doing up there on trying to bring business 
uh, into the state. Um, Fred, you were discussing the snow removal, but what impact is all of this going to have on the waste collection? Do we know? Because you're going to be using a lot of personnel. Uh, actually, this is all hired personnel for the oh. removal. Oh. We don't have personnel sufficient to, to remove this snow. We have to contract out to do it. Uh, and we're doing that on an emergency basis, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. So um, these contractors are coming in to work with us to get the snow removed. Wow. We have to do it. Working with us with their own equipment or with their, their own equipment. Okay. Our equipment is still out cleaning out cul-de-sacs and, and cleaning up streets that okay. uh, need to be plowed and pushed back. Uh, we have two more storms coming, so we need to shelf all these streets. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of snow yet to take care of. Yeah. We don't know how much, but we've been told the storm on Thursday will be another major storm. Mm. So, uh, but, but if property owners will look at the town's website or check Channel 22. Yes. I mentioned to Rusty earlier in the evening if it's possible for the school to post the notice on the bottom that says what trash days or what waste collection days are up. There may be an adjustment, so you at home would want to watch that day by day, and that will tell you. Because right now, the most recent one was that Monday's collections would be pushed Correct. to Tuesday, yeah. and the collections for this week would be pushed one day ahead. But that may change with the storms. And you could also go to our website, which also has a school. Yeah. No, the town's website. Town's website. Town's website. All that information yes. on it too. Yeah. As things change, we're keeping them up to date. Yeah. Immediately, so <coughs> people know what's going on. Right. Just so before you put out your site. cards, <coughs> check channel 22 check the town website to make sure that you have the correct day because you don't want your carts wiped out by the plows or picked up by the uh, loaders uh, <laughs> because yeah. they're buried in the snowbank eek mr griffin um <clears throat> what were you saying about uh from boar's head north what did you mean about removing snow there the numbered streets on the on the um, numbered streets. yeah the, the numbered streets going north uh, where we have town streets going north we're going to clean those mm -hmm. not the state uh, but we sort of divided things up by boar head boar's head being the division point mm -hmm. uh, they'll probably be taking a look at Dumas and, and those roads just to make sure that they're open and clear so that we can get traffic in and out of there without a problem. Yeah. Now, were there some complaints up about up at the top of Dumas, uh, or um, I guess that's Dumas, or mm -hmm. does it change to Cliff, that people's mailboxes were um, uh, taken take damaged? Out. Well, no, they weren't damaged. They were just someone was dumping the snow right on top of them, yeah. and it appeared to be the town. Okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't received that complaint. Uh, Public Works may have it's 39. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the person I brought it to my attention is Danielian. Okay. And um, but then she called back and said something was taken care of. So had the, if she called Public Works or somehow Public Works found out about it, they should have taken care of that and cleared mm -hmm. the area. Yeah. Okay. So. And now is there a possibility that there'll be federal funds for all of this we are keeping track of the of the amount of funding here both uh, the cost for the police department the fire department the public works yeah. department and any contractors that we've engaged and yes there is a possibility that we will be reimbursed 75 percent of our costs mm -hmm. don't expect the state to come up with the 25 percent <laughs> but uh, the federal government could reimburse us the 75 uh, percent of our total costs so we're keeping a very true record of what's going mm -hmm. on okay good because i i've heard them say that that's what's happening in massachusetts so i presumed it would be here too it, yes and, and they are it's uh, the the total costs are run up by county and if they exceed yeah. a certain amount of money depending on the type of storm mm -hmm. uh then the reimbursement costs are 75 percent to those who document it's and like we a are hurricane, prepared yeah. to document yeah mm -hmm. thank you have some people down the beach that are uh, uh, looking to haul snow from private residents or private to try to clean up some of their yards so they can get out. Yep. Do we have any means that we can allow them to to uh, bring the snow to our parking lot? My suggestion would be that they call Public Works. Uh, there's a lot of equipment running around down there in the parking lot, and I don't. Mm. If they know who's coming 
and they approve it, then I don't think there's a problem. The snow's got to get moved somewhere. Yeah. It's just not going to evaporate. I so. just think, you know, if we've got private residents <clears throat> down there trying to haul snow off, they're paying to have it hauled off. Yeah. At least if they can only haul it to the beach, it helps right. them out quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. It's a good and question. I mean, if we can push it up, you know, while we're pushing the rest of the snow up, just, just I, don't, I don't see a problem with that. I just think they need to call Public Works and tell them they're coming good. so that they know. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Other than that, the guys at Public Works have done an excellent job. It's, oh, yeah. been a, uh, yeah. it's been a very trying time. Very, uh, they've, uh, they've had a lot of guys down there that have been sick with this flu that's going around, mm. and uh, they still managed to get everything done and keep our roads open and safe, and I appreciate it. Thank you. My, my comments uh, would be that uh, the entire town has performed magnificently. Uh, people have uh, um, grown and become more experienced, although we haven't had much snow. And uh, they're staying off the roads, they're cooperating, and there's a real synergy and real teamwork. And uh, it's really nice to see. And Hampton's performing very well. And the citizenry is performing very well. And Mr. Welch, you and your entire uh, force of uh, Public employees are doing exceptional, exceptional work. I'd like to thank Jim Waddell, uh, Representative Cushing, Representative Rice, and Senator Stiles and mm. his board for the efforts on uh, House Bill 224. Uh, I'd like to thank the committee uh, chair that allowed folks to speak on that. And uh, this, this bill uh, affects us, and it's been going on for years. And it's $1.2 million of tax money that comes out of this town and the rest of the state perhaps can fend for itself but uh, our effort is uh, to uh, secure the 1.2 million dollars that Nextera uh, benefits uh, on the backs is yeah. Selectman Woolsey has so aptly said an additional tax on Hampton residents and property owners. Yep. We would invite uh, the governor she was quoted in uh, um, the paper saying that she was not in favor perhaps of tax exemptions that was just in the Portsmouth Herald this weekend mm -hmm. and we would hope that the governor mm -hmm. our next door neighbor from Exeter would uh, favor Hampton residents mm -hmm. uh, and not allow this tax dodge by next terror yep. to continue in the same spirit that she yep. would uh, um, cast uh, um, some doubt about giving additional tax credits to small businesses mm -hmm. in Hampton that are seeking that next terror of course is a multi-billion dollar international Out of state. corporation. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, we, we want to convey that we're working with the New Hampshire Municipal Association and Cordell Johnson. Jim Waddell drove up there. The uh, our representative delegation was extraordinary. And uh, it, it's interesting to go watch that up in Concord. And everyone's nice and speaks nice. But I would just uh, let the town of Hampton know that going forward, uh, this issue is going to remain on high. Yeah. And uh, we encourage the governor to come to uh, the taxpayer support in this town, the governor's council, and we encourage the, uh, the legislators to know that it won't end this year and it will never end until it stops mm -hmm. uh, because it's a completely unacceptable travesty. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Chairman, the governor represents all the other communities because there are other communities than Hampton that are impacted. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, Roman 8 is new business, and Mr. Welch, I'd like you to quarterback this, the revisit of the votes on the Warren articles. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there was, there was a substantial change on uh, Article Number 12, which is the budget, and uh, the thought ha had occurred to all of us that uh, the Board of Selectmen had recommended um, or had voted not to recommend the budget 5-0. Of course, the town meeting turned around and changed the budget to what the selectmen had originally proposed, mm -hmm. thus the insurance change. Uh, and we thought perhaps the Board of Selectmen would like to revise that to recommending it 5-0. Thank you. And uh, we have been afforded this, mm -hmm. this document here. Is uh, a board member ready to make some motions? I'll make the motion. Uh, that we uh, reconsider the vote, re vote uh, reconsider to open the, the voted committee. recommendation of the Board of Selectmen on Article 12, the warrant, the budget. I'll second. Not recommend. I'll recommend. second. Yep. Further discussion? I would just like to say that, you know, we, we went to the deliberative session. A number of speakers got up. We listened to the public. They had a secret ballot, and I believe it was three to one in favor of this and the public 
spoke of what they wanted, and they want services in this town. They are tired of going backwards, and they realize that if we want to move forward, we have to do something. Mm -hmm. That's what I took from that meeting. So. Thank you. And Mr. Welch, was that motion uh, legally sufficient for yes, the purposes? Sir. Thank yes. you. Uh, there's a, uh, a first and a second. Any further discussion? A real quick comment. Obviously, you see the snow removal costs from the winter oh, yes. that have impacted <laughs> us. And those of you who follow things like gasoline, the gas prices are going up. Went up by again. 15 cents just today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But it's not volatile. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Uh, Article 41, Mr. Welch. Uh, I don't think you, you probably need to change anything else in the, uh, in the warrant. Uh, 41 was a petitioned article, and uh, I think you, you sort of asked all the petition articles to go through, and you would recommend them, at least from the standpoint they were petitioned, and people have the right to do that. And thank you very much. Roman 9, old business, Mr. Waddell. Nope. Ah, well, I don't. It's older. Just a quick comment, uh, gentlemen. January 22 letter from the Property Liability Trust to the chairman, um, asking for permission to host the regional training for boards, administrators, etc., on March 12th from 6:30 to 8:30. Here, are we approving that? Do we need to vote to approve it? What are we doing? Uh, I thought it was already approved. Oh, well, I just want to be sure because yeah. I marked it on my calendar. Right. But okay, and then um, let's see the poll license petition for uh, Unitil, the right of way. This is the beach that's coming before us. That's N Street. That's N Street. Oh, excuse me. This is for the right of way. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, they, and they're coming. They have to come in to us because they've been to the CONCOM. They have, and, and I've um, I reviewed that uh, when I received it, uh, and I, I understand why they're doing it. They try, they're trying to get at least one of those high tension lines out of the middle of the marsh, mm -hmm. which is a good idea. Uh, the problem is that this apparently is conservation land. Yes. And that's in order, where they were. In order for the town to give. A deeded right to conservation land, whether it be an easement or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it's not contained in the conservation statute. Once, mm -hmm. once it's conservation land, it's conservation land. Uh, you may end up, and I don't know, I've asked the question whether or not the selectmen can approve it or yeah. whether it's got to go to town meeting. Because conservation told the gentleman that they knew they'd have to appear before the board of selectmen related to the matter. So we're still yeah. sorting it out. The, the, we okay. are. We're hope, hopeful we'll, okay. we'll have an easy way to do it, but okay. right now we don't know. I didn't want it to slip through the cracks. And a nice letter from Marilyn Wallingford yes. uh, related to the uh, gazebo area in Morelli Park and so forth. The, she has done wonders, and so have her volunteers on the garden clubs uh, for years. Uh, beautifying the town, and I just wanted to give her a public, uh, little public recognition. Uh, and then Aquarian Water Company, January 26th. Is it all right if I read a portion of this letter because it relates to the rate reduction or rate credit? Mm -hmm. um, and this is to you, Mr. Manager. Uh, dear Fred, we're pleased to inform you that for the next three years, the rate the town of Hampton pays for its water bills and public fire protection charges will include a 4% credit. This means that from January 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2017, the cost of public fire protection will be 4% less. This is the result of a change in the way the Internal Revenue Service allows us to account for capital investments at a subsequent $905,000 refund. All Aquarian customers, homeowners, businesses, and municipalities will share in this refund. So I thought that was good news. It's good news in one respect and bad news in another. Well, the Wicca is another. The Wicca is going to be the problem. Situation. Yeah. Right. Now, the letter you received, and it's dated February 22nd, and this is, I think, of concern to all of us, on the, uh, <laughs> the bridge, um, to replace the bridge that they don't name here, but that you found out, I believe, is the Taylor River Bridge. Uh, bridge 120-102 yes. is the Taylor River Bridge. Yes. Now, how or do or what do we do? We respond at all in this? We have made inquiry of the state to find out whether or not this involves removal of the dam. Mm. As you can see from reading the letter, mm -hmm. 
there's no indication of what they're doing. Right. Well, it's, typical. it's sort of a carte blanche, open-ended, <laughs> whatever you want to do, go ahead and do it. And the yeah. state DES is going to approve it. Um, we're still concerned with the amount of contamination and yep. the silt behind the dam. We want to, we've asked the question. Um, if necessary, we'll, we'll do the appeal because we don't get a right answer. Yeah. I mean, just sneaking that in and not even, thank God Fred knew what bridge they were referring to, but sneaking that through, I think, was not very nice. Two more quick comments. Um, I did, and we were talking about the extra costs and, and so forth and the perhaps little difficulties with budgeting that we encountered this year. That's why I asked um, Deputy Chief Ayotte to provide the information on the increased call volume for the fire department. And I'm going to be asking as we go through the year to have information like that forwarded directly to the Budget Committee so they can follow the trail and follow the action throughout the year so that they are as up to date as they can be on what's happening with our budget and our activities. And my final inquiry, a member of this board has uh, sent a public, um, an RSA 91A request to uh, the Chairman of the Budget Committee for clarification. Have you had a response? Only response that she doesn't respond to uh, emails. Uh, do we have any cause of action here as a board? Could we, um, since, since Jim, it's just a point of order. Right. Um, um, Mrs. Wilson, could, could we let Jim uh, administrate his own 91 uh, Alpha request uh, in his own fashion? And keep us up to date? We'll do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Sir. No. Thank all, you. All set. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a motion to adjourn. At what hour now? You're the... Yeah, that clock's wrong. 2035. Um? 2035. 2035. I'll make, I'll make it. Uh, second. second.